Tesla. What an interesting automobile this is. Now, this isn't from the past. This is for the future. In fact, this is the electric car. Now, if you want to really read the whole story about the electric car, go to richyz.com. We have it in our blog, but I'm going to probably do it in audio, too, uh, how the uh, oil industry actually killed the electric car. Everybody says they wouldn't work, it wouldn't last, it, on and on and on. It, you wouldn't get the power, the performance, and all kinds of ridiculous rumors, folks. That's right, ridiculous rumors. This Tesla here uh, actually will go 245 miles, I believe it is, on a single charge. That's number one. Zero to 60 in 3.7 to 3.9 seconds. But let me go a little further because this has kind of a Chicago um, thing to it. Nikolai Tesla was really the godfather of electricity like we know today. Actually, he was a partner of Edison's and then he went off and uh, went on to work with Westinghouse. But Nikolai Tesla was the one that actually invented AC power. 1981 DeLorean. This is uh, a piece of history that's just so interesting to me. In fact, I grew up in the era of John DeLorean. John DeLorean was kind of the bad boy of uh, GM. He was a designer, a car designer. Brilliant man, but he was like the rebel, sort of like a James Dean character. I remember reading an article about him. We're going to actually do his story, but I remember reading an article. When everybody showed up at a corporate meeting at General Motors with the traditional black suit, black tie, white shirt, and Oxford shoes, DeLorean showed up in a naval jacket, like a blue uh, jacket with gold buttons, open-collared shirt, and a pair of khaki pants, and a pair of loafers with no socks on. So he was uh, an interesting character to say the least. If you'd like to hear more about DeLorean, keep tuning into our podcast because we're going to do the history of John DeLorean on the podcast. That's at RichieZ.com. Volkswagen. They started out with the Beetle, but they grew to the Carmen Ghia for a uh, kind of a different look sports car convertible as we have here. And I'm sitting right now in a 1963 15 window mini micro bus. These were very popular back in uh, America, back in the 60s and that. Uh, in fact, it was uh, a vehicle that really took on its own uh, cult following, if you want to say. I know a lot of the uh, people that listened to uh, hard rock back then, you know, you're, those people used to travel the country a lot. They called themselves flower children and all of that. I remember these things were very popular in the 60s television series also, where they would, uh, it was flower power at the time. People, uh, women were burning their bras, uh, guys were burning their draft cards. It was a whole different era. But these were very popular with them, but also with uh, people that really were energy conscious back then. These little four cylinder engines in these Volkswagens. Uh, ran and ran and ran forever, and the gas mileage was unbelievable. But then again, what do you want from an automobile that was built that well? The Volkswagen was uh, an interesting history in itself. If you'd like to hear more, we actually have a one-hour television a radio show on RichieZ.com. That's R-I-C-H-I-E-Z-I-E.com. We tell the history of Ferdinand Porsche the only one ever in the history of the automobile industry to build a car, design and build a car completely. Uh, he had built the Volkswagen Beetles in a barn at his home in Austria. We are fortunate today. We're at this uh, private collection. I do have the curator of this museum, Ben Lockwood, and Ben's going to give us a little bit of history of what it took to put this, I call it automotive heaven, that's the name of my show, but this is automotive heaven. So tell us a little bit about uh, Larry and the collection. Sure. Uh, 
you know, Larry has been an avid collector all of his life. And, uh, you know, I got to know Larry back in 1998 when I joined his real estate company. And both of us have a strong passion for, uh, for cars and, and, the, uh, and the industry. And so we decided, uh, you know, to store our cars in one of our local office buildings. Uh, and it was in the lower level. It was dark, it was damp, it was dingy. And I kept saying to Larry, uh, you know, with the great cars that he had at the time, I said, you should display them. You should have them out and about. And I started looking for a industrial building uh, that we could uh, uh, move the collection to, uh, and also as a real estate investment for the company. And this is back in uh, uh, 2008, 2009. And uh, the market had collapsed, and we thought it would be a great, great opportunity. Well, Larry ended up taking over an industrial building that we already uh, owned and a tenant had moved out of. And we took the opportunity to uh, take the collection, display it, and from there it just grew. Uh, this is back in 2010. We, we started uh, knocking out walls, uh, adding cars to the collection, taking over more space, which allowed Larry to uh, go out and buy even more vehicles that he uh, was passionate about. Uh, and there are vehicles in the collection here that I've, I've picked out and we've, you know, elected to uh, purchase and display as well. You know, one thing I want to mention, folks, this building was an industrial building, as he's saying. I've been in these things, in and out of these things all my life in Chicago, and uh, they're a mess. This used to be a print shop, right? So this building looks nothing like it did when you guys took over, correct? That's correct. This was Hall Printing and one of the largest uh, printers in the country for many years. And the complex actually uh, it was, a, it was a huge complex and uh, we're actually occupying only a part of it. <laughs> um, we just completed an expansion. Uh, we're up to about 80,000 square feet of display area and over 300 vehicles. That's, it, it's amazing. And you know what I really want to say about, you guys are going to be able to see some cars. We did some panning because there's so many cars here. And I'm like you guys out there. I, I have a passion for the automobile industry. I remember one time when we were doing talk radio, somebody actually called in and said, you know, well, you like a certain car. And I said, no, I, I beg to differ. I, I think cars are like ladies. Uh, women have something, they're all pretty in their own little way. And same thing with the automobile. Uh, I've been around and I've seen a lot of collections throughout the years. This is one of the most unique things you'll ever see in the history of the automobile industry because there's stuff from the foreign market here, the old MGs, the old Triumphs, the old Jaguars, to the late model stuff, racing industry, luxury cars, Packards, Cadillacs, Lincolns. I mean, where did this come about to, to have all these different, you guys got a DeLorean here. Right. A well, Duesenberg. Correct. Uh, the, Duse, uh, you know, the Duesenbergs and stuff, uh, the DeLorean uh, actually was one of Larry's uh, daily drivers. Um, you know, the collection uh, is extremely eclectic. In, in its nature, uh, cars from the turn of the century till today, um, and that's what makes this collection unique. It's it's you know going out and looking at a car for itself, and saying, wow, that that's something un unique or different, uh, as opposed to saying, let's let's collect all muscle cars or let's collect all antique cars or brass cars. Uh, you see everything here. You see the race cars. You see the street rods. Uh, you see the. Uh, original Packards, there's a Rolls-Royce collection, a Cadillac collection, right. you know, collections that, um, you know, within a collection, if you will, that Larry has uh, uh, put together. He, you know, he's very passionate about uh, Cadillac and Rolls-Royce and, and, and uh, Packard and, uh, you know, and so am I as well. I'm in the Packard Club and it, to me it's, you know, those are great cars. All beautiful in their own little way, isn't it? I mean, it's just, uh, you guys got some unique, from an Etzel to a, a, a Caribbean to, I mean, just on and on. It's just amazing. So what do you see in the future for our collection and that here? You think uh, possibly it'll ever be, uh, you know, I, I see it as like a tour destination for uh, major car clubs or things like sure. that. Um, yeah, we've had um, a number of car clubs through here. Uh, you know, it's something we, we like to do because they share the, the same passion that we do. Uh, we have been uh, focusing our attention on the 
uh, on the market uh, that allow tour groups, um, uh, large organizations to come through here. Uh, our background has been opening this facility up to charities. We've done a number of charity events here, and uh, we see that continuing as well. And corporate events. Uh, we think there's a, you know, it's a very spe special place to have a corporate event, unlike any other. I mean, you can get tired of the typical museums uh, after a while, and then you bring uh, people here and they see this collection, which they didn't even know existed, and the, uh, the breadth of the collection, and uh, it's really something special. This automobile here, folks, you might think it's something out of the Art Deco design era. In fact, Bugatti, it has a lot of features that the Bugatti automobile had. And um, if any of you are familiar with the Delahaye, this vehicle here has a lot of features of the Delahaye automobile back in the Art Deco era. Well, this actually is a custom car built in 1988. It's called an Atlantis. What a gorgeous piece of machinery. I'm glad to see some of the custom car builders are building something from the classic car era of the Roaring Twenties. The era, 50s, 60s, and 70s. Krager Mags and that uh, beautiful white wall tire was a 50s trademark in an automobile. This is a 1956 Lincoln. Continental. In fact, um, you had to really be a person with a little bit of money back then. When the average car cost around uh, fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars, brand new. This automobile here was ten thousand dollars. But this one here is a concept car from the fifties. They actually uh, built something with the future in mind, with the bubble top on it. 1958 Cadillac Eldorado Brome. This is a very rare, sought after automobile. As far as Cadillac styling, this is one of the things that Harley Earl was really uh, involved with, with uh, General Motors. But this automobile is rare. They only made around 400 of them. It has the suicide doors, which I like, especially now in America, suicide doors would be uh, great because it's a lot easier to get in and out of the automobile with doors like this. But the problem, they called them suicide doors, was because if you got hit in the center post or in the two doors, uh, it actually crimped it together and you wouldn't be able to get out of the automobile. So that's one of the reasons suicide doors went out, off of the market. But in the 50s, late 50s, early 60s, automobiles had them. But this car here, is very rare because of the stainless steel roof they made. Now, I don't know if any of you have worked with stainless steel, but stainless steel is uh, the most durable, hardest to work with metals. Now, to get it to actually form into a top like this was really an engineering uh, design marvel. Harley Earl back then, uh, in General Motors line, came up with ideas and made them work. You know, sometimes uh, they call people like Harley Earl a dreamer. The wonderful thing about dreamers like him were that he made dreams come true. This is a very, very rare, sought after automobile, beautiful. I remember when I was a little kid seeing these in the neighborhood where I lived in Chicago. 1957 Plymouth Pro Street Fury. You know, folks, this was, uh, I'd say, one of the vehicles in the beginning of the muscle car era that became popular because it was so light. Mopar was dealing with uh, muscle cars in that era, but this one's very uh, interesting, has a very interesting history. This car was owned by Al Scheib. Scheib was uh, the son of the famous automobile painter Earl Scheib, back in the 50s and 60s, 
uh, even into the 70s, uh, he used to do television commercials. I'll paint any car for $29.95 back in the 50s and 60s. But this was his son's car. He actually did paint this automobile, but he acquired an engine for it from Keith Black. It's a 480 cubic inch engine. Estimated horsepower was 3,000. Uh, supercharged V8 engine with a three-speed uh, transmission. Uh, the, the engine actually was raced. It's a famous uh, Parnelli Jones in the 70s had it in a funny car. But uh, interesting history, and I'll take you one step further with this automobile. So rare, so unique that Hot Wheels legend and for the 1957 models, the 40th anniversary, of signature automobiles. In 1957, they had this Plymouth Fury, this one here, a uh, 57 Chevrolet, 57 Ford Fairlane, and the 57 Cadillac Eldorado. Roaring 20s was such a beautiful era when it came to the art deco design architecture and the automobiles back then. This is actually a replica of a dealership and what it would look like from the uh, era of the Roaring Twenties, from the beautiful clock outside, uh, the beautiful Art Deco design as far as the building, and even the beautiful chandeliers hanging inside the dealership. 1934 LaSalle Convertible Coupe. This is a very beautiful automobile has a lot of trademarks of uh, Harley Earl and styling. It had the rumble seat in the back. I'll give you a little piece of information. You know, they used to call the rumble seat, the original name for it was the mother-in-law seat. You actually put the mother-in-law outside the car in the back so she wouldn't drive you crazy while you're driving down the road. Back in those days, you could actually, this was an option from the automobile manufacturers, LaSalle actually had uh, suitcases for your luggage, but also back then, Route 66 was just completed in the early 30s. So people would have the gear to be able to picnic on the side of the roads. 1919 Ford TT fire engine pumper. You know, we are the city of the great Chicago fire in 1871 before the motor vehicle was on the road. Well, back in 1919, they actually came up with this vehicle where it would actually pump water on the fire at uh, a fire. Uh, beautiful 1919 Ford fire engine pumper. Studebaker in America built stagecoaches in the era of the Wild West, before automobiles came on the scene. In fact, Studebaker is in Indiana. If you ever have an opportunity and you want to see a beautiful museum from the stagecoaches through the automobile industry, Studebaker has a museum in Indiana. Check it out. But this is one of their gorgeous stagecoaches. In fact, they're the ones that built all the stagecoaches for the presidents before the automobile industry. This whole room in this museum, this museum is uh, very interesting. In the city of Chicago, it is the finest automobile museum that I've been in, in the city of Chicago. I've always asked the question for the last 26 years or so, why not in Chicago with an automobile museum? Well, this room here is the Woody Room. We have a Rolls Royce completely built out of wood. Now, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about wood and the automobile industry. Uh, teak wood is what they use in most of these uh, automobiles that they built with wood, like this 33 Rolls Royce. But a car collector, a true car collector in the South would not own this automobile for one reason. Reason being they'd be afraid of termites getting in here and tearing the car apart. But this is very rare, very uh, unique, like a lot of the automobiles we've seen here at the uh, Claremont Collection in Chicago, Illinois. 
The red Chrysler, town and country, in this shot is a Woody. You know, a real cute slogan they had back in the 40s was a whisper of country clubs and moonlight rides with the convertibles that Chrysler came out with back then. Beautiful Woody automobiles. These were uh, sort of like the beachcombers in California loved these automobiles, but also the people that picnicked and all of that. It was just an interesting moniker for an automobile, and it, it, it drew its own cult following. They love the Woody. 1948 Packard station wagon. Packard has always been one of my favorite automobiles, but this one is very attractive. I love the color combination here with the Woody on the sides, but it's also very rare that they have this camper on the back. You know, back in the 40s, really, they just got started with hotels on the road and all of that. So prior to that, they would have these little campers where basically it was a sleeping quarter, as you see here, and uh, you had all your cooking utensils on the back. So you were able to cook your meals and get some well-needed rest after being on Route 66 all day long without air conditioning or anything. A two-lane highway going from Chicago's downtown Michigan Avenue in Adams to Los Angeles, California. Chicago to LA, a trip down Route 66 with this 48 Packard and a little camper on the back. Nineteen forty one Packard Deluxe Station Wagon. This is uh, Packard with a station wagon. This is more of a luxurious look to the Woody station wagon, wagon that Packard actually came out with. Another very interesting automobile. These Woodies were very popular back in the 30s and 40s. 1950 Willys Overland Jeepster. Jeep has a, a very interesting history in America. You know, uh, back in 1970, AMC actually purchased the Jeep automobile uh, from Kaiser Corporation. Uh, they were around for a long time, but in the 80s, back in uh, 1987, Chrysler actually bought out AMC, but they didn't keep the AMC brand around, the American Motors uh, Corporation. They actually just bought it to get the Jeep and we still have the Jeep around today. But another little interesting piece about Jeeps, they became extremely popular right after World War II. We sent probably 10,000 Jeeps to Europe during World War II to fight the Nazis and that, and the uh, GIs fell in love with them. 1950 Studebaker Coupe, when this automobile came out, the front end of it has got like a bullet look on it. Uh, people fell in love with this automobile because of the styling uh, back in 1950 of the automobile. But let me give you a little history about Studebaker. Studebaker was America's economy car back in the 50s. Um, they had little six cylinder engines with one barrel carburetors on them, great gas mileage, affordable, the only reason that Studebaker didn't survive was at that time, General Motors was spending around $3 million a day in advertising worldwide. Studebaker did not have a budget to actually advertise the wonderful product that they had. 1932 Duesenberg dual cowl Phaeton. One of the most famous uh, sayings slogans in the industry was, it's a doozy. Well, that's where the saying came from, from the Duesenberg automobile. Duesenberg, a little bit of Duesenberg history. 1913, the Duesenberg brothers began building the most luxurious automobile on the road in America. 
and uh, it was built all the way up until 1937. But an interesting point was that the Dusen brother, Duesenberg brothers, that's easy for me to say, actually sold the company to the Auburn uh, car company in Auburn, Indiana. E.L. Cord actually purchased the Duesenberg name brand. Now these cars were completely hand built. Just to give you an idea of what a Duesenberg was back then, it was the epitome of luxury, uh, speed, comfort, in an automobile. Um, when when a, an average car cost around $1,000 maybe, uh, Duesenberg automobiles went from anywhere from around $15,000 to $20,000. Some of the famous people that owned Duesenberg was Clark Gable. They said that uh, Humphrey Bogart actually had one. Um, and um, there's some rumors that actually Mickey Rooney had a Duesenberg automobile. They only made around 600, I believe it was like 685 total throughout the years, but very sought after, very luxurious uh, styling and comfort and elegance was the Duesenberg automobile. Very well sought after still to this very day. If you'd like to advertise on the Chicago History and Automotive Heaven television and radio show, you can contact me at 312-841-2560. Uh, Email me at r-a-u-t-o-m-d at gmail.com. Go to our website and check out all of our stuff. We have a sponsors page on there um, at richiez.com. That's <clears throat> www.richiezie.com. If you have a business, product, or a service, we can put together a package that'll help benefit your business, product, or service. Or if you just like to donate, it's a pledge drive. Uh, you can donate to our show and keep us on the air. Uh, we're actually looking for sponsors to do a lot more shows like you've seen today. I'm Richie Z, thank you for watching.